Well, it's happening again. Israel has confirmed that they have bombed Gaza, breaking their ceasefire yet again. Now, this is a developing story. As I record this, the details are still scarce. Having said that, though, here's what I know at the time that I'm filming this. As AJ Plus reports, breaking, Israel confirmed it launched airstrikes on occupied Gaza. The attack comes weeks after Israeli airstrikes in May killed over 250 Palestinians and hours after Israel allowed a far-right nationalist march in occupied East Jerusalem. Now, a lot of folks who don't necessarily follow Israeli politics too closely might be thinking, wait... I thought that Benjamin Netanyahu, who was like the main problem, is out. So they have a new prime minister, so things in theory should get better, right? Well, actually, no. The new prime minister, at best, is as bad as Benjamin Netanyahu, but at worst, is more extreme than Benjamin Netanyahu. A far-right extremist, ethno-nationalist war criminal. Yeah. There's actually a bar lower than that. So as Ariel Gold of Common Dreams explains, after 12 years, Israel finally inaugurated a new prime minister. While being hailed by many as the opportunity for a fresh start, Naftali Bennett is at best a continuation of Netanyahu's policies and at worst, an ideologue whose positions are to the right of Netanyahu's. In 2013, as Middle East peace talks were set to resume after a five-year freeze, Bennett reportedly proclaimed to Israeli National Security Advisor Yaakov Amidror, I've killed lots of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that. In 2014, Bennett, who had previously been the director of Yesha Settlements Council, contradicted Netanyahu by asserting that all Jewish Israelis living in the West Bank, even those living in outposts that violate Israeli law, should remain under Israeli sovereignty and called for more settlement construction. This is the time to act, he said. We must continue building in all corners of the land of Israel with determination and without being confused. We are building and we will not stop. In 2016, as Israel's Minister of Education, Bennett called on Israeli Jews to give our lives to annex the West Bank. While this might seem relatively innocuous, it was not. Bennett's remarks invoked Kahanism, a Jewish supremacist ideology based on the views of Rabbi Mir Kahane that calls for violence and terrorism to be used to secure Israel as an ethno-nationalist state. In 1994, Israeli settler and Kahane follower Baruch Goldstein massacred Palestinians in the West Bank Ibrahimi Mosque. In 1988, the Koch party was banned from running for the Israeli Knesset. In 2004, the U.S. State Department labeled Koch a terrorist organization. Sunday, June 13, 2021, right before he was inaugurated to replace Netanyahu as the Prime Minister of Israel, Bennett doubled down on his anti-Palestinian views, proclaiming that his government would strengthen settlements across the whole of the land of Israel. So if you thought that things were going to get better, unfortunately, that's not the case. Again, at best, this is a continuation of the status quo, but things could deteriorate further with this extremist. And really, the only check on his power is he has to hold together this really broad coalition of parties. Otherwise, he's not going to remain in power. So he does kind of have that check on him. But this individual is an extremist. He's not just an ethno-nationalist, but he is deeply theocratic. And he really revealed how theocratic he is in a 2017 interview with Mehdi Hassan that Mehdi shared the other day. And this is honestly, it's astounding that this person is now the prime minister. You're not carving out your own country. Uh, you're withdrawing from occupied territories, which everyone in the world, including Israel's own Supreme Court, regards as occupied territory. That's the problem. You can't carve out stuff that's not your own. <laughs> Madi, I, I guess what you need to do is go uh, back and change the Bible. You need to change the narrative of the Bible because it's all there. Is, and I assume is Israel a theocracy? all Muslims, uh, th Christians, is Israel a and Jews. Is it a religious state? I assume. Why are you quoting the Bible to me? I'm quoting the Supreme Christians, Court Muslims of and your Jews. country. Hold on, the Supreme Court of your let country. Let me finish. Let, let me just put the quote yeah, of the yeah, Supreme yeah. Court to you and then you respond. You're to finding... The Judea and Samaria areas are held by the state of Israel in belligerent occupation. That is the view of the Supreme Court of your country. Are you saying the Bible trumps your Supreme Court? Is Israel now a theocracy? Let me finish. Um, billions of Muslims and Christians believe in the Bible. I assume, uh, including yourself, I don't know. If you want to uh, say that our land does not belong to us, I, I suggest you go change the Bible first, come back and then show me a new Bible that says that the land of Israel doesn't belong to Jews. Well, I mean, this book with talking snakes and other mythical creatures, you know, three-headed beasts, it says that Israel belongs to us. So, sorry, Palestinians, looks like you all have to leave your homes and uh, go away. 
it's just it's shocking like extremist after extremist keeps getting elected it's not just a trend in israel i mean we see bolsonaro in brazil trump in the united states modi in india there are extremists all around the world who are emerging but you know for a situation that's as volatile as this as sensitive as this you need someone who isn't as much of a provocateur. I mean, I don't know what the right word is to use. Netanyahu should be in prison for the rest of his life. And this is the individual who critiqued Netanyahu because he wasn't extreme enough. The situation is just bad. And we're seeing that things aren't changing already. The ceasefire is broken. So, you know, um, there's going to be more to come on this story. I'm sure. Hopefully this isn't going to be a prolonged bombing campaign. But all I know is that the situation is tragic and just more will continue unless the U.S. government stops defending this, stops being complicit in these crimes against humanity.